What's going on, smart people? I'm not in my room by a door. I am standing and holding the camera. I almost forgot how to do this. It's been so long. I just got back from ODU. I was working with a grad student on a research project, and it went really, really well. He seems to have a better grasp of the physics than I do, and I seem to have a little bit better of a grasp of the coding because I'm more experienced with that respect. But when you put us together, we just, we just got stuff done. Pretty much our supervisor said our goal for the week is to plot how one thing changes with something else. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? And, and to an extent it is, but this function depends on like eight other variables, so we had to fix seven of them. But the thing is, is um, one of those variables actually depends as well on the independent variable. So effectively what we had was a function of a function and then the independent variable. And we wanted to make sure that we could plot this out without losing any of the modularization. If you're not sure what that word means, go check out my video on how to do it in Python. Basically, we, we have a file that has all of our function definitions in it. I didn't want to have to pull any of that out in order to do all of this plotting stuff. So we had to wiggle around that a little bit, but it ended up you know, putting us together. It took us like an hour. So we did pretty much our goal for the week in a little over an hour's time, which is awesome. I think I have a bit better of a way of explaining this. Picture you have some function f that depends on x and it depends on t. But as it turns out, x also depends on t. So that means that as you loop or as you sweep through t values, x also changes. So it was making sure that we could plot it out while taking into account that x is also going to be changing, which uh, ended up not being too hard. We got it knocked out today, so I'm really stoked about that. Also, when it comes to uh, another code that we wrote. I'm pretty big on letting things be inputs, like, hey, enter enter a specific value of this. If you don't want it, then it'll choose this by default. But what I learned today is something that is absolutely amazing. I learned how to, I don't even know what to call it, tunability, have tunability with the code. Let me just show you what I mean. Oh, what? You don't have to specify specific values of all of these things? You can just adjust them with with theoretical knobs. That might not seem like a huge deal, but for me, what, actually, let me adjust this focus a little bit. There we go. That might not seem like a huge deal, uh, just having knobs and stuff that you can turn, but one of my shortcomings with this project is all of those variables, it's hard for me to picture how they all relate to each other, how changing one affects the other. So before, what I was having to do was input specific values of these things and see if I could see a trend on how it affect other variables. Whereas for this, you can literally just adjust it. There's no input, run the code, and then do it again. So that's really gonna help me picture what I'm doing better. For those of you who might be curious on like what libraries I had to import to use that kind of thing, it's IPy widgets. I don't know uh, very many other, other things to use with that. I'd love to learn more, and as I do learn more, I might start to feel more comfortable maybe making a video on that stuff in the future. But as for right now, that's all, that's, that's the limit of my knowledge. As for the rest of this internship, how, how it's sort of playing out is, um, so we have a code that calculates these things called region ratios. All you need to know is these region ratios tell you basically what kind of approximations are okay to be made because they're necessary. And then we have another code that plots how these region ratios sort of change as you vary certain parameters. Uh, the next step is, is we need to start pulling some data from actual experiments because it seems like a big part of our confusion is we're not quite sure if we're trying to match stuff up with experiments or if we're trying to gain some predictive power to say what experiments should look for. So now that we're moving so quickly through the project, we need uh, to better define the question that's being asked before we can get anywhere else. So throughout the next week, I expect us to meet with our supervisor who can probably clear up some of these questions that we might have. But until then, I really need to sit down and think about what my question really is because there's nothing more annoying than asking a question and kind of stopping dead in your tracks and being like, what exactly is my question again? I don't even know what I don't know. But that's what's coming next. But it's also my mom's birthday and my sister and I are taking her out to dinner, so I'm gonna end the video here. I haven't really made update videos nearly as frequently as I feel like I used to, so hopefully this was a nice change of pace and definitely a little bit of a change of scenery. But uh, let me know in the comments section how you guys are doing, how you guys are enjoying your summer, and I'll see you guys there. Also, hashtag happy birthday mom all over the comments, thanks.